So my name is Safia El Hello. I am Sudanese American, I guess. Um, my family is from Sudan. I was born in the U.S., but did not move here until 2000 or 2001. Um, I write poems and I teach teenagers. The Arab world in general has such a rich literary history, which I feel like in you know, recent interpretations of Sharia law and things like that has been censored and repressed in a way that doesn't really do justice to how amazing and powerful and how long it's been around. Um, so I think it's, you know, amazing that we have festivals like Al Mutanabi Street to sort of celebrate that tradition and that history and make sure that people in 2016 don't forget that that's going on. Sudan in general is at a kind of tortured crossroads between uh, the Arab world and our actual African identity. So uh, the way I like to think of Sudanese identity, especially in trying to sort of place us racially, which ends up being where a lot of people get tripped up, is that Sudanese are Arabized Africans. Um, so we are not ethnically Arab. I think most Sudanese are ethnically Nubian, but you know, with the spread of Islam, um, we were an Ottoman colony for some time. We were occupied by Egypt for some time. So there was a good deal of Arabization that was put into place, and not necessarily violently, but you know, it was there. So now the main language in Sudan is Arabic, and you know, we participate in a lot of Arab cultural things. Um, but I think it's sort of created this fiction about race in Sudan, where, especially in uh, North Sudan, now that there's been the referendum and the secession, but a lot of Northern Sudanese sort of move through the world pretending to be Arab, and it, you know, it's caused us quite a bit of trauma. I come from, I wouldn't say a long line of poets, but there's a, my grandfather is a poet on my mom's side, and he writes in Arabic. And uh, the story goes, because I never met his sisters, but you know, rumor has it that two of them were also poets, but at that time, girls weren't going to school, so they couldn't read or write, but they would, uh, you know, they were m more of the oral tradition, I guess you could say, where they would sit together and they would make up these poems and memorize them and recite them to each other. But because there was no codification of that, you know, when they passed away, there is no proof that those poems ever existed other than people whose lives overlapped with theirs who may have heard tell that they were poets but you know I've never heard any of their poems I've definitely never read any of their poems and I think um, sort of where I come in is that I am privileged enough to be able to read and write so you know I get to make up my poems and put them down somewhere and maybe try and have the stories I've been told live a little bit longer than they did in my great aunt's case so a lot of the Sudanese poetry that I've encountered is uh, very colloquial in ways that I think are fairly radical in that a lot of the ways that we're taught Arabic is that this is, uh, you know, this is classical fusha Arabic and this is the way to write academically and this is the correct way to write and the way that you speak is not the way that Arabic is written. So I think a lot of, uh, a lot of colloquial Arabic is dismissed when it comes down to writing it down, but I think, uh, and Tlaib Saleh is not a poet, he was a novelist, but he, what he did that was radical was he wrote all of his novels in the way that Arabic is spoken in Sudan, so they're colloquial, but they're written in Arabic text. So I write in English, but I do try and incorporate sort of that element of trying to represent as best as I can the way that I actually speak in my writing instead of trying to adhere to sort of a, a canon or a tradition that dismisses the nuances of my identity and my linguistic history. And I, I just got back from Sudan a week ago and I'm trying to get used to how cold it is here. But on my first day there, I was invited to an open mic that a group of youth run there called Nas with notepads. Nas means people in Arabic. Um, and they run, I think, a monthly open mic and workshop series. And it's all these young Sudanese people who are writing either in English or Arabic or a really beautiful combination of the two, which I was really excited to see because that sort of hybrid Arabic English is the way that I feel most comfortable speaking. It's the way that I speak to my family where you know you don't ever have to feel like you're translating. The word comes out in whatever language it occurs to you in. So to see people harnessing that and writing in that hybrid language I think is very exciting for me and I think is 
very helpful for you know Sudanese Americans or just Sudanese youth who grow up in the diaspora who think that you know we're not fluent on one end or another and that this sort of in-between language that we speak is not a real enough language to write in.